Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be simplifying a trigonometric expression. Now this problem comes from one of my viewers, nobodyman181, and we're going to go ahead and prove this identity. So pretend you don't know what it is, let's go ahead and prove this or find out what this expression is equivalent to, okay? So we have cosine squared z plus sine squared z. Obviously, we can approach this in different ways. One of the approaches that I'm going to talk about will be using a very important formula, which is Euler's formula, or you can call it the polar form. So what do we know about the polar form of a complex number? If you have something like e to the power iz, you can write it as cosine of z plus i sine of z, right? And then if you replace z with negative z, you get e to the power negative iz, and then the cosine of negative z is the same as cosine of z, but sine is odd, so it's going to bring a negative sign. Okay? Cool. So what do we get from here? We can go ahead and use these two equations, like add them side by side and cancel the sine z, and we get two formulas from here. One of them is cosine z equals e to the power iz plus e to the power negative iz divided by 2. And the other one is sine z, which is e to the iz minus e to the negative iz. So there's a minus sign with the sign, and that's divided by 2i instead of 2. So it's not that hard to memorize. If you know these formulas, definitely it's going to help. But if you ever forget them on a test and if you have some time, you can go ahead and derive them by adding these two equations and subtracting them. Okay? Cool. So we got these. So why not just plug them into our expression? Because that's exactly what we have. Cosine squared z plus sine squared z. So we're going to go ahead and take the cosine and square it right and take the sine and square it now be careful when you do that you're not going to get a common denominator but it's going to be easy actually you are going to get a common denominator if you ignore the minus sign so this is going to turn into the following if you expand a plus b squared you're going to get e to the 2iz plus e to the negative 2iz from the squares plus 2ab, notice that when you multiply these, you get e to the power 0, which is 1, so you're just going to get 2. So it's kind of like the polynomial x plus 1 over x. When you square it, you get, remember, x squared plus 1 over x squared plus a 2, which comes from the 2ab. Make sense? Cool. That is our first part. That's going to divide by 4. And this one here is going to be e to the 2iz plus e to the negative 2iz minus the 2, because there's a minus sign here divided by 4 i squared, i squared is negative 1, so it's going to be minus 4. To get rid of that minus sign, we can go ahead and change this to a minus sign and turn this into a plus sign. Make sense? Now, we can go ahead and subtract the numerators because we have a common denominator. Make sense? Let's do it. e to the 2iz plus e to the negative 2iz plus 2 minus e to the 2iz minus e to the negative 2iz plus 4. And of course, uh, wait a minute, it shouldn't be a plus 4, it should be a plus 2 again. I don't know how I came up with the 4. That's a 2. All of that is divided by 4. Awesome. Now notice that these terms cancel out. e to the 2iz, e to the 2iz, e to the negative 2iz, e to the negative 2iz. You end up with 2 plus 2, which is 4, divided by 4 is equal to 1. And you're like, what? Are you serious? Cosine squared z plus sine squared z is 1, even when z is complex. And that's an identity that we can always use with different problems, such as if they told you what, what happens if cosine z is equal to i, then you can find sine z from there, which is going to be kind of interesting. But another problem is going to come up that kind of uses this idea uh, pretty soon. I think it's going to be tomorrow. All right, anyways, that's the plan. So, the answer is 1, but how could we approach this problem a little differently? Is there an alternative? Uh, sure. If you think about it this way, just ignore the fact that z is a complex number and we want to simplify this. We could draw a right triangle, like couldn't we? I mean, if you draw a right triangle with the uh, angle being z here, and then kind of name the side lengths like a, b, and c, Pythagorean 
theorem. Some people say Pythagorean, but I think it is Pythagorean. Anyways, that's a different story. A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. You know, this is a very old theorem, and there's hundreds of hundreds of proofs of this, right? Now, anyways, let's go ahead and write the sine and cosine. So what is cosine of Z here? It's the adjacent over hypotenuse, and sine of Z is opposite over hypotenuse. So if you square them, if you square them and add them, you're going to be getting b squared over c squared plus a squared over c squared. And that's going to be b squared plus a squared over c squared. Since we know from Pythagorean theorem, again, it's Pythagorean, right? Hopefully. Uh, you can just go ahead and replace b squared plus a squared with c squared or vice versa. And this is going to give you c squared over c squared. And that is going to equal one as before. So this is a very well-known identity and very helpful, super duper helpful identity if you are dealing with trigonometry. Let me give you a couple examples. For example, uh, they'll sometimes give you a problem like, okay, sine z plus cosine z is equal to square root of two. And then where do you go from here? I mean, you can definitely do lots of lots of different things, but one of the easiest ways to handle this problem is square both sides and then take advantage of the fact that sine squared plus cosine squared is equal to one because the rest is just going to be double angle, so on and so forth. Oops, I wrote an X by mistake. It's supposed to be a Z. And now you can go ahead and subtract it, and this will be sine of 2Z. One thing you need to be careful about, though, when you square both sides, sometimes you'll be introducing some extraneous solutions because squaring also uh, gives us solutions that are not uh, solutions to the original. Like, for example, if I had this equation and by squaring, I would get the same set of solutions. But obviously, these two equations are different and, you know, um, you just have to be careful about that. Make sense? Okay, so this is basically one, uh, the second way to approach it. And... I'm kind of thinking about, uh, given that this cosine z plus i sine z is equal to e to the i z, and cosine z minus i sine z is equal to e to the negative i z, you could also do the following. I'm thinking about it, like maybe an alternative method. Uh, suppose you don't know those identities. Square both sides on both equations. So when you square these, what kind of expression you're going to be getting, right? You're going to be getting cosine squared z uh, minus uh, sine squared z and then plus two cosine z plus two i cosine z sine z. And the second equation is just gonna give you the same thing with a minus sign, right? And then when you, when you kind of add these equations, that's gonna give you the difference between cosine squared and sine squared. So I don't think it's gonna be that helpful, but you could probably get somewhere from here. I'm thinking, anyways, this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.